Hi guys, I'm Ben Neville, sales designer and estimator at MC Electrical, here to discuss export limiting. First, we're going to define what it is, go through its pros and cons, and how to overcome it. So, let's get into it. Before I go into defining what export limiting is, I'm just going to refer to the Energex metering manual just to show what households are allowed to install in the way of solar. If we refer to table one here of single phase micro EG connections or solar connections, you'll see we can have system capacities up to 10 kVA or up to 10 kilowatt inverter capacities on single phase. However, there is a note saying export limits apply for these installations. And essentially these are the export limits that apply to these installations, that being single phase export limited to five kilowatts. So you can install 10 kilowatts on single phase, but it's export limited to five kilowatts. That's important and that's the main takeaway first. So now moving on to the definition. Uh, please bear with me, it is gonna get a bit technical, but we'll get to some good applications soon. Just know it is really important and it could really save you a lot of money in getting a system you don't need or simply getting the correct size system. So the graphs down below are what are called solar graphs. These are real graphs that have been pushed from your Fronius to a server online to try and illustrate what your system is producing and also in this case, what your household is consuming. Now for a brief overview, our Y axis is our kilowatt capacity or what your system is producing and our X axis at the bottom is just a time scale. And for the color codes, our green portion is the amount that's being sent to the grid for a feed-in credit and the grey filled in section is what's being used by the household directly. You'll also notice an unfilled in grey section which is also being used by the household but it's being bought from the grid because solar at these hours isn't functioning. It's night time. Now what export limiting is and what we're most concerned with is this green portion or the power to the grid. Now at any one time this amount can't exceed a certain amount. Now referring back to the Energex guidelines the most common amount is 5 kilowatts basically means that this green section can never be higher than five kilowatts, even if your system wants to produce more. Now in the example to my left, you can see how this green section is able to rise in the middle of the day as the household consumption rises because it's able to increase its five kilowatt export limit. Now the graph to the right is a simulation I've done up showing what the system can get to if the household consumption increases throughout the day. It's no longer being held back by this five kilowatt export and it can reach that 10 kilowatt sizing. This single phase household definitely benefited by installing a larger system. Had they only installed the five kilowatt, their consumption would not have been met by the solar. You can see it peaking at periods of eight kilowatts there. So a system larger than five kilowatts was required. And we can really back this up with facts now, which is uh, great with Fronia SolarWeb. So the system to the left here is what we've been continuously referring to. Uh, had this premises not had solar, on this day they would have paid $18 for power. Now, because they have solar, obviously, they didn't have to pay for any of that gray filled in section as it was covered by solar. They've only had to pay for the unfilled in section at night uh, and then had a reduction also from the green portion there of feeding credit. So that resulted in a bill of $2 instead, which is a $16 saving. Now, this is the same household on the right. Had they gone for a standard five kilowatt system to not take advantage of the 10 kilowatt allowance, but export limited down to five they're not losing anything as a result of export limiting because of how much power they're using in the day. However, again, uh, still same $18 pay they would have had without solar, but in the case of the right, you can see that they're buying more from the grid in the middle of the day because the solar isn't enough to power everything. They're also not exporting as much. You can see the green field in section isn't as high. So I've calculated it instead, they would have paid $11 for power this day, which is just a saving of $7. Now, don't get me wrong, the $7 saving every day is great, and in reality, it would have been a, a good end result for this customer. However, it wasn't as good as the system on the left with a saving of $16 every day. So this is one quick advantage of the pro of export limiting and taking advantage of the fact you can install 10 kilowatts. Both are good results, but obviously saving more for the system on the left worked out in the case of this customer. The other advantages of an export limited system is the system simply reduces more in the morning and afternoon and in general. If we look down below, we're comparing a export limited 8.2 kilowatt system to a standard five kilowatt system. And you'll notice at 8 a.m. the 8.0 kilowatt system hits 5.11 kilowatts. I've worked that out by plusing the 4.26 and the 0.85. Whereas in comparison, the five kilowatt system is producing just 3.6, again, respectively three kilowatts plus 600 watts. 
So earlier morning, you are hitting a lot more power, which can be useful if you're a morning user, just want more power in general. And again, the same effect is seen in the afternoon with the Export Limited 8.2 kilowatt system producing over 6 kilowatts at 3 p.m. with the normal 5 kilowatt system producing about 3.6. So again, higher usage in the afternoon, such as aircon, more favorable to a bigger system. Potentially the biggest mistake you could make, and what we're seeing a lot of quotes out there unfortunately, is just going that 10 kilowatts for the sake of it. Homeowners are either not understanding it or it's not being explained properly in the quoting process, but if you're getting 10 kilowatts and you're export limited to 5 kilowatts at one time, that means that you need a pretty excessive base load of 5 kilowatts so as nothing is wasted, if you will. As an extreme example, uh, the image to my right is the same system but without the same consumption profile of the one on the left that we're continually referring to. You can see it have a hard flat line here at just above five kilowatts because it's limited to that five kilowatt export. So you've paid for a 10 kilowatt system, but your usage is limiting you to much the same as if you bought a five kilowatt system. On paper, it looks good, but in reality, you could have paid half the price um, and had the same outcome. Now this is incredibly important. Uh, although you can have 10 kilowatts, it's not for everyone. It's up to a good analysis of the bill and the way you use power to determine what size is suitable. Too often we're seeing quotes out there for 10 kilowatts in, on single phase simply because you can. So as always, the answer is generally a happy middle ground. You, you don't have to go the full 10 and it's quite rare you ever need to do that because that is a very large system for a single phase household that most places would see losses for. So Fronius have their six kilowatt Primo range and an 8.2 kilowatt Primo range. These are good middle ground sizes to take advantage of slight export limiting without going the excessive 10 kilowatt range. If you go for a six kilowatt inverter, you've really only one kilowatt above the export allowance and it's not difficult to use one kilowatt worth of power. Whether that be fridges, lights, small computer usage, most households are gonna see advantages of at least a six kilowatt system. The 8.2 kilowatt system is also another good one without going too excessive. At this point, we're looking at roughly 3.2 kilowatts over the base load that would be required. So good candidates here are households with pools or air conditioning systems, or generally just if you're working from home, it's not too hard to use that much power. And this 8.2 kilowatt system is a really good solution of taking advantage of export limiting without going overboard all the way to the 10 kilowatts. So installing a 10 kilowatt solar system with export limiting is a great way for single phase households to get more out of their system and more out of matching their consumption profiles. It's just important to understand how it's going to work, don't go too excessive with the sizing, and try and shift any consumption habits you can to the daytime to minimise any losses that export limiting may bring about. Thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you next time.